All right, welcome back. Last time we were making a position based movement. This time we're going to make a physics based. So where we were last time, we were over here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to press delete or actually yeah, delete would be easier. So I'm just going to press delete and I'm going to create a new object which has physics properties. Now, if we were to go on node you'll notice it doesn't have a physics so physics is not possible to it so I'm gonna delete that and then instead I'm gonna go into the physics tab by right-clicking physics and then clicking on object dummy for object dummy you'll notice it has a physics tab I'm gonna reset its position probably gonna make this one so now it's like one in the air what I'm also gonna do is uh, right-click create a primitive probably make a capsule because it's easier to make a capsule I'm just gonna choose its basics click it somewhere over here and now the capsule is a child of the object dummy what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make its position zero 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 so it's like in the middle of the air now we go back to the object dummy itself and we're gonna add a physics to it and instead of just none we're gonna add a rigid physics we're gonna keep everything the same and we're gonna go down to the shapes I'm gonna choose capsule and press add now it looks like a little circle because it's not a capsule yet we have to make the height into like let's say one and it looks like a capsule and we're technically done with making the capsule I'm just gonna raise it up a little bit to test if the capsule works so if I press play simulation it bounces meaning it works all right we're gonna do one more thing and that's gonna be a plus and add property now I went ahead and I made a little class that's a component base just like usual except I made a new folder so to make folders just right click here press add new filter a folder and just make any classes and put it in there only reason I did that is so it looks clean and then I made a new class just right clicking it add class and I made a class called physics controller and then I made this here you can just copy and paste it by pausing this video and we'll go back here and wherever I kept that property I'm gonna um, paste it into this and I believe we're almost done the rest we're gonna do it as we code so we go back here and you'll notice we have two different or new properties here one is a float that's max speed which I gave it a 15 15 as its default number and I added a body rigid pointer it's basically a pointer that points to body rigid physics which is gonna be this It's gonna point into this so we can affect this immediately and since it's connected to this program it's gonna only affect this one so if I had another object dummy and it had its own physics but it's not connected to this property it's not gonna connect it but since we did this I'll do that so first things first how do we initialize that if we look carefully it was a main character and we're gonna initialize it by using the smaller n node and I'm gonna put an arrow I'm gonna say get object body rigid with the brackets and now it's initialized now I added a little extra and I added um, a max speed of a property parameter so this way you can change the max speed over here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set that as our maximum speed so if before I even go into that let's go into the physics tab to explain a few things your linear and angular or L and A in all your physics tab for rigid means your linear scale and your angular scale linear means your movement in that direction angular means your rotation in that direction so in our case linear scale means how much it will be affected since we kept it one it means it'll be constant effect in angular scale it will rotate in all directions. but what we want to do is make sure that it doesn't rotate on x and y meaning it doesn't roll over or topple off so we're just gonna press 0 0 and leave Z 1 which means we can look around with that damping means how long it takes for the object to come to zero once you stop pressing or giving it some force so if I just gave it five it means it has a five amount of damping meaning it's a pretty high amount of damp which slows it down faster 
both in rotation and in movement. Your maximum linear velocity is going to be the max speed that we're going to do it by code. And then your angular velocity is your angular movement. This is going to be your, if I remember correctly, it's the frozen linear velocity, meaning the amount of speed it takes before it turns free, frozen. What that does is once you freeze an object, it won't be used in physics calculation unless it starts moving. So it saves you performance and it's one of the best things in this program. So we did a few things here and now let's add the maximum linear velocity. So we just go to main character, add the arrow, set max linear velocity and it's going to ask for an amount and we're going to choose max underscore speed dot get and that's going to get the speed and it's going to set it as that maximum linear velocity so we got everything set up let's actually write some code so let's do the old if just write if and then press tab it's going to give you all this so let's do the usual if unigen input So we made our normal input uh, module. If you don't know this, just look in my old video. That's like five minutes. And we chose, as long as I'm pressing W, I'm gonna move forward. In our case, it's Y. Since Unigen's forward is always considered Y and it's up is considered Z. So we're gonna say main character and we're gonna give it an ang a linear impulse, which means a, a directional movement force so there's two options to do this we have the option to do a force and we have the option to do an impulse we're gonna do impulse because it's easier and then from impulse we also have the option to split it into either linear or angular we're gonna choose linear for directional and this makes it really easier for us next we're gonna choose our forward so we're gonna go with the node and node has the get world direction. So we have the ability to get the direction of the object itself. And we're gonna choose the direction, which is going to be math. And then it's going to be axis underscore Y. And that's going to be the forward axis. Now that's gonna move it forward. We can copy by uh, clicking and selecting it all. Control C to copy, come down here and Control V to paste. And then instead of W, we're gonna choose S. So that's gonna be the opposite. And then for negative Y, we're just gonna add an N before the Y and that's the negative Y. So now we have a forward and a backwards. Next, we're gonna have a left and right. So I'm just gonna copy paste all this. So it's a little easier to write it. And then I'm gonna choose D and for this one a and now we have to have a rotation so for rotation we have two options we either have a torque or we have the angular impulse since we've done linear impulse we're gonna stay with the whole uh, impulse thing we're gonna do an angular impulse and we're gonna choose a direction now remember how I said if you rotate along an axis it does different things in unigen or in terms of 3d world the up rotation so anything that you're rotating on the up axis means you're rotating around it so you're rolling it so if i'm rolling the x it means i'm looking left and right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do and add an angular and we're gonna do it on the negative z and the positive z so I'm just going to remove everything because it's no, it's default is negative Z for D. And for this guy, I'm going to do a Z. This way it's going to move the other way. And let's just press play and find out. So first let's move left and right. Oops. Because I didn't choose the change for angular impulse over here what's gonna happen is pressing down is gonna make it go down pressing up is gonna make it go up left and right is going too fast so we're gonna reset that movement by multiplying it 
by uh, Unigen game get IFPS and that resets its movement to frames or like consistent movement and I'm just gonna copy paste that on the other one and I'm gonna press play and that's going to give us our basic movement so we turn left it's going left we turn right it's going right all right so we got the whole movement going on properly turning right moving forward turning left moving forward and that's the basics of physics based controller now the beauty of physics based controller is that it follows collisions so you don't have to write extra code to make it go through walls it won't go through walls it's gonna follow the curve and the flow of uh, terrains now whether this is better than the other way that I wrote is up to you again every game is different if you want a world where it has a fixed movement the previous position based controller was better and if you want something that's more realistic it's gonna be this one now this is the basics I think I might delve further or next episode I'm gonna go into camera controls because I don't want the unit going all the way there and we can't even see it so we're gonna do some kind of code to make sure the camera follows us all right i guess that's it we'll see you again next time all right goodbye